Um, so France is obviously, you know, FX has a reputation of, you know, has a pretty bad reputation overall. Um, I guess, why do you think that is and, and what, what can entities in the Forex industry do to improve that reputation and, you know, ultimately become better? Yes, well, I think you're right that there, there has been um, an oiliness to particularly foreign exchange uh, trading. Um, there's, there is almost a surge of, of fashion and trend for it, uh, sort of late 90s, mid 90s into the 2000s. And it seemed a very useful way um, for potential small house brokers to enrich themselves at uh, client's expense almost. And I think a large part of that is the old A book, B book discussion. In other words, you're entering into a relationship with somebody who wishes to see you fail for them to profit. Um, that's never going to work out well. You know, the incentives are misaligned. In all, all that I discuss, I talk about being, you know, values of people you engage with being aligned. Do the people that you're engaging, whether they're in your life or whatever kind of business relationship, is there an alignment of interest? Never enter into a partnership, and you are actually entering into a quasi-partnership of engagement when you appoint a forex broker. Uh, are you entering in on the basis that the two parties both have the same goal? One might be to, um, the minute you make a deposit, that's their money just waiting to migrate to their pocket, or they recognize it as your funds and wish you to be a sustainable, successful trader that continues to provide residual income from the brokerage uh, f uh, spread, which is fair, reasonable and in reasonable exchange so that a, an honest broker can exist and survive while providing a very efficient service for a trader to go about his duty to survive. If it's that kind of relationship, you've got something that can flourish. Unfortunately, the ones with the flashiest and loudest marketing, mainstream marketing, the byway on the highway, um, are the ones that are going to be uh, probably the least likely to be providing you. The ones that phone you out of a, uh, the blue on a cold call, they're always outbound um, looking and always asking you to redeposit, etc., etc. And it's all about minimums getting you started on $50, etc. Let's be frank, if you only have $50 to set aside for trading FX, you shouldn't be trading FX. You should make it one month's contribution in an equity linked uh, unit trust until such time as you're a little bit more liquid. Um, but unfortunately, people get sold on fantasies. So the brokers you really want, and I'm, I mean, I'm going on quite a narrative here, but the brokers you really want are people that want people with some degree of means already and are interested in those, uh, they are non naive clients. They're not trying to perpetuate a fantasy to those already fairly skeptical street smart clients. Um, those street smart clients are already well resourced and liquid and they want a good utility service that is consistent and they want a little bit of personal touch potentially and great execution. And um, those are the guys you should uh, contemplate and, and you know, having come and chatted to you guys, uh, the values that I'm hearing if, if, if executed going forward is something that I was really impressed with today from our chat. The values are really, it, it, there needs to be a change in culture, I believe, because technology will always be there. You know, there's always going to be good technology. You know, everyone's got the MT4, everyone's got the C Trader. But I think what really needs to change is the culture of Forex. Um, you know, in these particular entities. Do you see any way in, in where, you know, the ch uh, culture of Forex will change in, in the future? I think it will be enforced. Most change that comes to an industry that's become parasitic or has a parasitic element. I can't blame everybody who operates in that. So we're talking about a specific niche, but where it's been encouraged. Part of it is through the naivety of clients, part of, it, part of it is for the willingness of those to exploit it, but I think it will have an oily reputation and it's hard to shake once that's established. That's why you've got to set sail from the outset with integrity, with high aligned values from the get-go. Um, you can flourish in an industry where there is, it has had a certain element of tarnish, if you yourself clearly differentiate your, yourself as that, and um, those are the people that will, that will survive. And that's what's great also about the Scandinavian ethic, 
Um, it's legitimate. It's civilized. It's a, it's clean, crisp society. I think we spoke of you know the the, the Volvo of potentially um, being uh, a, a broker. If I'm taking risks in the market, there's already enough risk around me. The vehicle in which I'm engaging with, let it be a Volvo, um, not something for which the wheels are about to fall off um, and the petrol tank's about to explode. Uh, so those are those are the analogies I would certainly say. And um, there tends to be geographies where this has happened, and thankfully, um, Scandinavia, uh, Sweden is you know not one of those. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, decency, uh, fair play generally tend to be uh, a common integrity. So I'm just excited to see that this is taking foot A from the right part of the world and B with the right principles. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm excited to see what you guys achieve um, mm -hmm. and execute with that. And we just saw a very good opportunity to leverage everything that Sweden and Scandinavia pretty much stands for. Yeah. You know? um, Sweden is boring, maybe, but you know it stands for safety, security, transparency, um, you know, neutrality. You know, we've had the neutrality policy for many, many years, which is why we haven't had wars for you yep. know two hundred or two hundred fifty years. You know, so I guess our main goal was just to incorporate a lot of these key Swedish or Scandinavian values into an FX brokerage, where you know, much like there's no, we have the neutrality policy. We are neutral in our brokerage as well, whereby we don't take sides. Yeah. We just provide a fair and equitable trading environment and the tools for you to be able to succeed. And then it's up to you to be able to trade, you know. Yeah. Um, so, so that's really, I guess, our, our goal that, that we really want to achieve with this, you know, Valhalla project. And also, you know, like we discussed earlier is that, you know, we want to see the people that we interact with, you know, we don't want to be that much of the, this business is done through screens, unfortunately, and, and you're just an MT4 number, you know, yeah. uh, in, in many aspects. So, um, I think what we need to do is. Uh, take back the the you know to a more relationship oriented business where you whereby you do business with the old school handshake you know uh, and I think that's really what's been missing in the industries is really you know doing business live you know where you actually see the per people you hear their stories we tell our stories and and I think that will eliminate a lot of the greed unfortunately that has been happening in this industry for many years. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and short term is money, whether as a trader or as a broker operator, is short term is thinking is always fatal. Um, it's fatal to its industry, it's fatal to the business, and it's fatal to you as a trader. Consistency, it's not about a single trade, it's about the process of trades throughout your trading career to your last trade in your dying days or as a trader which could be 40, 50 years away. Um, it's about that process. Is it a hockey stick that you're getting? And sometimes it's slowly, slowly you build and you learn. And in the same way for a broker operator, uh, I, I like the idea of building long, sustainable relationships hmm. over a crash and burn approach. And unfortunately, there was a lot of fast and furious hmm. um, approach. And it's not to tarnish those uh, geographies that were mentioned. Sometimes they are operators from outside that have used those locations um, because it's afforded them an angle to go in lightly regulated and get away with a large amount of things. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that it is a, a detrimental scene that mm -hmm. does run through. And it seems more airfix. You're not hearing it on, um, you know, equities um, or, or commodity traders right, and that. Right. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pity. Those markets are not inherently evil. Mm -hmm. You know, technology is not inherently evil. It's the human factor that comes in and sees an opportunity maybe for uh, exploitation. The forex markets are open 24-7, so it gives unrestricted time. People work 9 to 5. That's often when the equity markets are open. So, you know, for someone who's chasing a jobber, who's, you know, scratching money together and is hoping on a dream, a little bit prone to fantasy, not got much and wanting to hit the ball out of the park from the get-go where he has no skills, they are fertile ground for trading in between in their working hours and even checking on their brakes on their device now that mobile trading has taken off. So all the technologies have converged that have allowed this uh, development. And um, it's once again aspects of people that are maybe um, 
unfortunately spoiling it. But at the same time, the regulators are, are clearing up and maybe are clearing up in the wrong spaces mm -hmm. um, because they hurt the industry as a whole. Right. Um, which again, as yourself, you've got the, 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 the power of the European connection and your good integrity standing uh, of Sweden, but also outside those, those specific um, laws as well, mm, which mm. is exciting. Mm. Because to a responsible person, a reasonable amount of leverage is useful. Right, right, exactly. Which is, you know, most of some brokers when I was trading back in the day, you know, they actually wanted you to over trade. You know, uh, you know, they were giving all these signals and, you know, for you to trade even more. And, uh, you know, but that only lasts, the client lasts for, you know, only a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you know, if it's an inexperienced trader, you know. Yeah. So I think the mentality really have to shift from a short term thinking to a more long term thinking, because ultimately every party succeeds, you know, if there's a long term relationship, you know. Um, so, so that's, I think, is really key to have that longevity and, and that long-term thinking as opposed to something which is very, very short-term, uh, which I think will lead this industry. And it's, it's very interesting you mentioned, you know, uh, about this, you know, particular industry. There is no Forex Peace Army in equities, for an example, you know, or <laughs> no. futures or options or anything. It's no. just this industry. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think there's a lot of element of gambling and gaming, you know, industry that has come into the FX and, you know, for some reason sort of, you know, tarnished the, the, the reputation, so to speak. But speaking on that, uh, how do you see regulation play out, you know, um, in the coming months or, or do you think it will have a big impact in, in the industry or? In the most over-regulated uh, areas, we're already seeing the effect of that and it's hurting the mainstream legitimate brokers where they've clamped down in those geographies. You know, they're not getting the volume and it's dying out. That said, there may be a few less people that are blowing themselves up at a ridiculous pace. So there is, you know, there's a night and a day. Uh, to it, but I think un in the right hands, uh, under properly trained uh, traders with some history, um, judicious use of le leverage is very useful. Um, these markets, even though FX is volatile, it's not as volatile as say the crypto markets, mm -hmm. uh, and people um, need to chase slow money, but they also need some degree of activity. We've got to give them a little bit of what they want, mm -hmm whilst also introducing a little bit of what they need right. um, to preserve them. So they've got to be careful not to overkill uh, the regulatory uh, side of it because then it, uh, it, it, could, it could damage the industry.